Hey, what's happening? Brendan here from Blueprint Training. Today in this video, we're gonna talk through social media for agencies. If you have been struggling to figure out how to warm up your leads, create an evergreen funnel of clients begging to work with you, trust me, this is, this is the video to watch. This might be one of the most important videos inside Blueprint. So let's talk about a few things. I think when we are SEO agencies and you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail right? Uh, and what it leads to is bad positioning, bad results, no demand. And it's because as SEOs, we love to use SEO. And we almost all do. We almost all try to get clients through organic search. And the problem is that ends up becoming a race to the bottom. Uh, I ranked number one for a Chicago SEO consultant for years, and I never got a single qualified lead from that. And that means we might have to test a different channel. Uh, we've talked about outbound and, and outreach. We've talked about Facebook ads before, uh, but let's, let's talk about social media. It's scary for a lot of SEOs. Let's be honest. A lot of people in SEO are highly technical. They're not super social. Social media has never been their forte. Um, but I, I would argue to you that social media is not, is not the devil. Um, it is, however, a treadmill. And unless you're this guy and you can keep running forever and ever, you have to learn to figure it out. And I think that's what I've done. Um, over the past six to 12 months, I have really, really ramped up how I think about social media and it's had huge effects. And while I can show you, these are my stats uh, from LinkedIn specifically, uh, just from like a little snapshot, right? From the end of just basically like July and August, uh, 2021. Um, just so you could see the starting point, right? Now, I already had a little bit of an audience on LinkedIn, but I'd never pursued it seriously. And uh, when I started pursuing it seriously and trying to get clients from it, this is what happened. Um, so I started the, the method of lead gen that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. This is, again, just from organic, no ads. One tactic, one month. I got 16 qualified leads. This is my, this is literally screenshots out of my Calendly showing it. And I'm not the only one. Here's one from uh, Tim, who's a member of Blueprint Platinum. And he and I talked through post this exact strategy. He was the first one that I really like shared this strategy with. He made one post and got a new client from it. Obviously results are not typical, but uh, it is something that's possible. So let's talk about two different ways of posting on, on LinkedIn. There's pillar posts and there's daily posts. Um, pillar posts we've kind of already talked about. If you watched the previous video on content marketing, uh, you'll understand the framework I'm about to give you. If you haven't yet, go back and watch that because you need to plan out this content ahead of time. Social media is just one way to distribute this content. So let's keep it super simple, right? You're the expert who can solve people's problems. Content is a way to showcase that. I like to think about this in like a jobs to be done sort of framework. Um, teach them how to use your product teach them how to get results. By your product, I mean, of course, your services. We've already walked through these five different things. I wanna show you what they look like and I wanna show you how I've personally used them. I wanna show you how I got the results. So this is my exact process. These are, this is my four-part framework. I work with SaaS uh, in software companies uh, in marketing consulting, and this is my exact process. This is how I share it in my uh, capabilities deck. This is literally what it looks like on my website. Just a generic like WordPress template, nothing fancy here. That's all at my website's three pages. If you haven't watched the five page website video yet, give that a watch. That's exactly what I use. That's exactly what works for me. It's where I would recommend starting and even staying if that's important to you. Um, but here's how I look through it. So how to solve your client's problem from a micro standpoint, I have made you see, uh, this is just kind of two different posts here, right? One month apart, I put a nice up into the right graph. It's the same one. Turns out you can share the same thing over and over. Look at those likes. Look at that engagement, 164, 120 reactions, 40 comments on one, 26 comments on the other. Just walking through my way that I solve problems. The first one is my overall framework. You can see, look, I was just explaining what my framework is. It's exact, look, look, it's just this. It's just, it's, it's almost exactly this slide. I just pasted it onto there. And people were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's the best framework ever. Thanks for sharing that, right? Then I shared uh, exactly how SaaS SEO has changed in the last year or so, right? Again, just solving their problem 
at a micro level. I'm not helping. I'm not actually giving them like tactical what to do, just giving them a framework to start thinking about it. The second one, solving their roadblocks. So I literally, uh, this post on the left, please steal this. This is me just walking through their roadblocks. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if it was like a conversation where we just walked through the roadblocks, right? And this is all their roadblocks. We're spread too thin. We don't have bandwidth. Um, they don't know what channel to invest in. They don't know who to hire. You know, all this, it's too complicated. It doesn't work. All these different things. Like we don't have budget. I just walked through their objections. Just make a post about their objections in like a fake conversation. These crush, right? And then I have another one over here on the right. That's, it's almost the exact same thing. Just phrased a little differently because remember this guy, like I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm trying to get off the treadmill. I have really uh, great, and you can feel free to pause these. If you want to read any of these or anything like that, feel free uh, to pause this, read through these, really get a deep dive and understand it. Because a lot of this, we're going to talk about copywriting here in a minute, um, is pretty crucial to that process as well. But these are just templates. And you can see the CTI on all of these. Comment below and I'll DM it to you. Comment and I'll DM it to you. Comment and I'll DM it to you, right? One was uh, for a, just a generic kind of like, hey, here's uh, my SEO framework. The second one, I used an image. Again, we'll talk about copywriting here in a bit. It's the exact same post three months later. Huge views. The first time I got 30,584 views, I reposted it three months later. 18,265 views. Guess how many people said, hey, Brendan, I've already read this. Zero. If they've already read it, they'll skip over it. Most of them don't remember that they read it three months ago. I've even had, I probably had about 10 people opt in for it twice. So I went to DM it to them and saw I DM'd it to them three months ago. They'd forgotten, right? That's okay. And the last one, there was a huge Google algorithm update. So I just made a little guide for it and said, if you want it, I'll DM it to you. Make templates for them. Have them connect with you. Say, hey, connect with me. Uh, and that's the cool thing. Like you're like, hey, if I, I can't DM it to you, you have to connect with me first. They'll connect and they'll request it. Then you DM it to them. Now they're going to see all of your posts. They've DM'd with you. They've commented on your post. The LinkedIn algorithm is like, hey, this is awesome. They love this person's stuff. I'm going to show it all to them. And now they have a piece of your content, right? That they've downloaded. Maybe even on all of these, I just send them a link where they, uh, download it uh, from like lead pages or click funnels or something like that. That way I capture their email address as well. Nobody complained. Nobody had an issue with it. Every, like, it was awesome. Uh, and still is, I still use this. Here's a client case study, right? Where I just kind of walk through, here's what happened. Here's what I did next, right? We've already talked about this framework in the previous video and then like high level, interesting roundups. So sometimes I, I like to crowdsource data and sometimes they're just memes, right? So you can see again, these views on these are huge. This is what I would call like bigger pillar content. Now the daily content, uh, I think about a couple different ways. It's really three different things, right? It's leading, discovering, and reporting. I got this framework from Justin Welsh. If you're looking to grow on LinkedIn, you should absolutely just Google Justin Welsh uh, LinkedIn operating system. Make sure to get his course. This is where I learned the three of these things. I think they're extremely powerful. I'm gonna walk through each of them briefly. So the first one is leading. This is just where you share experience, right? And this is the biggest thing I want you, you'll see, I'm not going to read this whole slide to you, but we want to make sure we lead our clients, not our peers. It's very easy to talk about SEO and all the other SEOs comment. And you do this like industry thing. A lot of people do that on Twitter, right? You can do it Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever, wherever your clients are. If they're on Facebook or Instagram, that's where you should be playing this game. Not the platforms I'm using targeting SaaS and software companies, but you have to lead your clients not your peers this is the biggest mistake people I see make on social. They want to be popular among the other dorks in our industry instead of being popular among the people that will pay them money. Next is discovering. Sometimes you're not the leader. You don't have experience. Maybe you're earlier in your journey. I literally just, and I put some examples here, ways to discover things. I study the top five dental websites close to me. Here's what I learned. Right, I went through the lead flow for 19 home service websites. Here's what they miss. I watched the five most recent videos from Noah Kagan. Uh, here's what I learned about YouTube. This one on the right, I literally just went on SparkToro, sparktoro.com. If you've never used it, you can get it for free. They have a free plan. Uh, I pulled up uh, SaaS marketing in there. And these are the 10 most popular podcasts in SaaS marketing. And I just shared that, right? It got huge reach. It was perfect for my audience. All I was doing was discovering for them. People ask all the time, what are the best podcasts to listen to? Well, here, by the numbers, here's the best ones. For people who talk about SaaS marketing on social media, here's the podcast they mention and interact with the most. Last is reporting. 
I love interviewing people. And sometimes you can get access to people that they can't, right? I interviewed the CEOs of the companies behind the top 10 Shopify stores. If you're in e-commerce, the creator of the first ever Shopify store is now worth 12.6 billion. Here's how he did it. If you don't know, spoiler, uh, the founder of Shopify had the first Shopify store. That's why they built it. Or you can see, I put some examples of my own on the right there. Uh, I interviewed the marketer. This is a better headline than the one I wrote my headline. Thrilled to kick off this week's interview with John Benini with a hot take. Right? I wanted them to click see more to see what the hot take was. However, I think the better one here is I interviewed the marketer behind Databox's 2,600 customers and 4.8 million 20, in 2021 alone. Right, It's a great headline. All I'm doing is reporting. I'm just sharing an interview I did and the highlights of that interview. You can do this all via DM. I've seen some people do really cool ones. I don't have a, an example here, but I do it within my uh, uh, community SEO for the rest of us sometimes, uh, which is just like beginner SEO things where I just send people DMs and then I just share like four question DMs and I share their replies. It's really, really powerful and pretty popular. Uh, next section here, if we're going to post on social media, we have to start to have a fundamental understanding of copywriting. So our five keys to copywriting on LinkedIn. Number one, we have to stop them from scrolling. When I started, look at this first one, secret time. Ooh, what's a secret? They'll stop scrolling. Next one, want to steal my SEO framework? Here's my four-step process that destroys keyword research in terms of, wait, it's better than keyword research? I'll stop scrolling for that. Traffic tanking, leads falling off. Think you got hit by the latest Google algorithm core update? I got you. It stops the scroll. It also, all of these create an open loop of like, oh, I need to keep reading. I need to close. I need to know what his SEO framework is. I need to know what changed and got him organized. I need to know what's going to help me recover from this algorithm update. It creates an open loop that they have to close. And if you, again, pause these and read through them, everything here, every line serves to get them to read further and further and further. Sometimes I'm even really intentional with the finger pointing down. I'm like, just keep going. Um, at the end, I try to summarize and then I have a CTA. You can't do this too often. It will exhaust your audience if you're always asking them to comment in order to receive something. But w once every other month, once a month, it's all good. Um, that is the key to copywriting for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, anything. You have to stop the scroll. You have to give them a reason to read the whole thing and then just keep them going through it. We got two more sections here. This one is interaction. And then we're going to talk about building a funnel on social media. So when it comes to interaction, uh, first, you have to reply to every single comment that you get. This will not only fuel the algorithm, but it also gets people to continue engaging. They'll see more of it, etc. You also have to go and engage with other people, right? Any platform you're on, strategically interact with the biggest people in your industry, not your peers, your clients. And I, I know, I know people are going to say this. I have an example on the right of interacting with somebody, uh, but they'll say like, none of my clients are big on social media. Cool. That might be true. Maybe there's no like big like dentists on social media if you're serving dental uh, or home service companies or whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, you don't feel like your clients are big on social media. Cool. Find out who they're following. Go on SparkToro. Find out people who talk about your topic. Who are they following on social? And then interact with those people. I know people in like Justin Walsh is a great example. Like I said, I've learned a ton from him. He talks a lot about growing on LinkedIn. He's huge on the creator economy. I don't serve the creator economy. I serve SaaS and software companies. But Justin's background is he was he led uh, sales at multiple software companies. He works with Dan Martell. He's big in software. A lot of people who work in software still follow Justin. I also really like him and I know him personally at this point. So that's part of just wanting to interact with somebody I like and care about. But um, if I didn't, I would still follow him because I know his followers have a big overlap with my audience, right? So interacting again, not only with all of our comments, don't ever leave a comment unreplied to, uh, and then finally interact with the people your clients are following. As a last piece here, let's talk about building a profile funnel on social media. This works the same on LinkedIn and on Twitter. You can see, I'm, I'm going to use Justin again as an example. On Twitter, this just means putting the link in your bio to go to like booking a call with you or going to like the results page on your website, right? Send them straight there. That's what I'm doing here on LinkedIn. The first link under my feet. Well, first of all, let's talk about this. And this is something, again, people do. They try to do something highly stylized. Um, the first thing is your header image, whether on Twitter, Facebook, any platform. Your header image, your headline has to give them a reason to do something. Mine is telling them to scroll down 
uh, and steal my SEO framework. And you can see if they were to scroll down in my featured section, the second link there is stealing my SEO framework. Also my headline, exploring what works in SaaS marketing and sharing it along the way. I could probably be a lot more direct and punchy, but that's the one I like, right? It gives me an exact reason uh, to follow me. This is exactly what I'll be talking about. You can see Justin does something similar. If I want to learn about branding, business, social, entrepreneurship, personal branding, I'd follow him. Uh, I recently changed his headline to the portfolio of one person business to 5 million in revenue, but that's compelling. If you're in the creator economy and you are a one person business, you would definitely want to follow him. And you can see grow and monetize your LinkedIn. If you scroll down, you see the same thing again. Mine is working with me through growth sprints and then getting my SEO framework or signing up for my newsletter. This is the profile funnel. You can send people to a link tree if you're on uh, Instagram or Twitter or whatever, but just build this out. So when they start to follow you, the main link sends them to work with you or engage with you more deeply by providing their email address, maybe even a micro product or something like that. If you have questions about this video, please, please, please comment in Slack, tag me, let me know. I would love to chat through. You can see I'm absolutely in love with social for agencies. Take a, yeah, I don't, I'm super excited. This is, this is going to, this is truly powerful stuff. So take a second, feel free to pause this video, go back, read the different posts that I made. Feel free to borrow all of those. Like don't steal the post, but like steal the framework, right? If I have a post that says old way and has a list and then it's like new way and has a list, steal that for your clients, right? Borrow all of this stuff. It's incredibly effective. And again, if you have any questions, let me know in Slack. Thanks.